so you can get an idea of, of what we're aiming for. It's kind of a cute little guy. If you know how to make the mouse, it's not a big stretch to make the chipmunk. They're very uh, close in how you go about forming them and how you go about finishing them and painting them. So we're using the mouse for our example, but in fact, once you know how to make the mouse, you'll be able to make all kinds of little creatures, little furry bug eye creatures. I need to make sure that my blade guide, which it needs to be just about a quarter of an inch above my piece of wood, because the closer that, that it is to supporting the blade, uh, the better off I'm going to be. And I know that that means I can remove that amount of wood very quickly using my large knife. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to take my large healthy knife, which is pretty large and very sharp, and, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and, and remove this wood. I'm going to remove this wood very quickly. I'm going to first, however, put on a few uh, things. I'm going, to have a, I'm going to have a thumb guard, and I'm going to have a finger guard, and I'm going to have a glove. Because as I mentioned, this is a very sharp knife. I just sharpened it up. And uh, it's kind of like a razor blade, which is uh, pretty much what you want with your blades most of the time. You want to have them pretty much like a razor blade. So since I know that I can remove this wood rather rapidly, I can go ahead and do that. And I'm going to stay behind the ear, because I don't want to, heaven forbid, make the ear any smaller. i put a little stop cut behind the ear to make sure I don't, heaven forbid, cut into that. So that when I'm done... You can still see the two red lines, but the wood between them is removed in a flat plane. Ears, you don't want to remove your ears, and sometimes if you're going a little crazy here rounding things off, you can knock off a bit of the ear. If you do that, uh, you just have to do it on both sides, unless you want to make it look like he was uh, caught by a cat. Next, we need to define the area between the ears so that we can remove it. If you go from the bandsawed mark and you come in a good eighth of an inch or a little bit more and draw a line parallel to that edge on both sides, that'll give you a good starting point for where your ears are going to go. Where the blank changes direction right here is where you're going to stop. You're not going to go any further than that. What I've done is I've drawn a couple of arrows this arrow is going this way and this arrow is going that way. Because the tail is curved and the grain of the wood is straight, it changes almost every time you make a stroke. So on the outside you need to go in this direction on that side of the tail and you need to go just the opposite direction on the inside of the curve. This is, a, this is very tricky and, and if it doesn't work and you end up breaking off the tail then uh, just tell people that you decided to make this one into a, uh, a hamster. Okay. On that tricky tail what I do is, is pretty much I shave just the edge so that I can get rid of the bandsaw marks then I come up over a little bit more and I go down to where the grain changes direction at that point, I'm going to turn it around and start working from the other direction very, very carefully. Uh, if I find that that doesn't work, I might have to go back to that original direction. Very shallow cuts so that you'll notice right away if your knife is digging in, stop. <laughs> and I've already checked to make sure that they're symmetrical, that he can see the end of his nose. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing on that side. After I've done that, it is handy to go ahead and color in that eyeball so you know exactly where it is. And if you've made a really strong indent like I have here, you should be able to see very clearly just almost exactly the way your eyes are going to look like when they're done. So we need to make a shape to his eye 
and it needs to go from back here to down here. This gives him, give his, gives him the tear duct and the area behind the eye so that his eye actually ends up at the end being kind of almond shaped. What you're going to do is you're going to make like a chip carving cut. You're going to come around the top of the eye, go into that eye duct, go around the bottom of the eye, go into that eye duct. Then you can come around the eyeball itself and finish off your chip. And then I'm going to go to my eighth inch veiner when I'm working along the back area. And I do want it to look like it's a longer fur. Also, I'd like you to notice this technique. Notice that I'm moving the gouge back and forth. I'm moving the mouse back and forth and I'm going over and over in the same area. I'm making a very irregular pattern. You, you absolutely have to do this irregular pattern. Um, by doing it that way you're giving a beautiful base for when we come in with the wood burning and we do our wood burning over this and when you're done that's how you're going to end up with something that looks an awful lot like mouse fur. Here I want to show you some of the tricks for making your fur end up where you want it to end up. Uh, I know I want it to go straight down the back so I went ahead and I made a streak going straight down the back. I know I wanted to come off the haunch and down to the tail so I did a streak there and then from this little area here on the top of the foot I knew it needed to go back all the way down to the long hair at the bottom. Now I've generated some areas that I can just fill in and I know which direction to go in I just need to keep going in the same direction and fill in the blanks. If you start it at one place and you just kind of start going up and all the way around it's very easy to get off and before you know it you've got your fur going in the wrong direction is that I pull out a little bit of color. So here I'm going to pull out a little bit of this color and pull out a little bit of that color then I'm going to mix them together just with my brush until I see that I've got the color that I want. Then I can add a little bit more paint and generate a little bit more paint. But in no case do you ever mix uh, two petals together and kind of settle for what you're going to get. It's much better if you experiment a little bit. And even though I've been painting for a long time, I'm always experimenting. So I'm going to go ahead, get my brush wet, drag out some of the burnt sienna, drag out some of the raw sienna, and mix the two of them together and see what I've got. I've got something that's kind of reddish, brownish, with a little kind of gold, a little bit of gold look to it. And that would be kind of uh, not a bad color for a mouse, I think. So once I have it kind of hmm, tannish. I'm going to add a little tiny bit of black to it just to see what happens. And that should be enough to tone it down so it's not going to be too garish. Anytime you're working on animals, especially these small animals, you always want to go darker and duller than you think you ought to go. Uh, it's really surprising how when you actually paint it onto your animal, it's going to appear a lot lighter than you think it is. So I'm going to make sure that my brush does not have much paint on it. <clears throat> this is called dry brushing and we're going to do it very carefully. You want to go across that area very lightly where you wood burned. So now we have this mouse looking very much like the other two mice that I have. My very first one, one of the other ones, and you see that their, their finishes, their coloration, their ears, their shape, they're all the same, only different. They're 
a bunch of mice. They each have their own character. 